It depends on its complexity, but the majority of time when you download a 3D model, you'll find that the mesh is not created as a single unit, but rather as a composition of a set of sub-meshes, with each one having its own properties, material included of course. For instance, if you download a model of a human character, most likely you'll find that the mesh is composed of a head mesh, which has its own properties, also a pair of hands and legs, with each one of them having also its own material and properties, etc. And that leads us to the main topic of this tutorial, which is how to get access to a certain property within that composition of meshes and bones that form the model using 3JS. As you can see here, we have this scene which includes a couple of lights and this cool looking low poly donkey that is loaded from a GLTF file, and we also have this empty GUI that we are going to use later on. All of that is generated with this template which I explained each part of it in details on my 3GS guide, so if there is something you don't understand here, make sure to check out the guide, I'll leave you the link in the description below. The last thing I want to mention before we start typing some code, is that you can download the mesh I'm using and a lot of other amazing 3D assets for free, from quaternius.com. The model I'm using in this tutorial belongs to the Ultimate Animated Animal Pack, so if you want to follow along, go to this pack, hit download, double click GLTF, then right click and hit download. With that said, let's log the object that contains the loaded model and see what are its components. Now I'll click on the group drop down icon, then children, the first element, children, group, then children, and there we go. We have 8 meshes, and as you see, each mesh has its own set of properties, including the material. Now, let's say we want to access the 5th mesh's material. To do that, we'll have to type all this lengthy line of code. So yes, that works. However, there is an easier and cleaner way to do that. 3GS provides that solution in a form of a method called getObjectByName, and as its name suggests, this method performs a search within the model, and then return an object if the value of its name property matches the string passed as argument. For example, if you want to access the second element which has cube1 as name, we'll simply type the following line which is more concise and actually gives more meaning than the other one, which is full of stops, brackets, and digits. And now, if we want to change the color of this component material, for instance, we'll just type the following line. So what we've learned so far is that if you want to get the material or any object that has a name property within an object 3D instance, we'll need to know the value of its name property first, then call get object by name. To get the name value we have a handful of ways, the first is the method we've just seen which is by logging the model object, we can also open the file in Blender, or check if anything is mentioned in some sort of a readme file paired with the model you downloaded. Another method which is my favorite is to open the file in the editor on the official 3GS website. So what we are going to do here is to simply drag and drop the GLTF file into the scene. Next, we'll add the directional light so we can see the details of the mesh. And then we can inspect the model elements through this list. As you can see here, the structure is more organized and readable than the console version. Not only that, we can actually modify the properties of each one of the submeshes materials in real time, which is a huge bonus and that's why I prefer this method. That said, we can create our own interface which we'll use to change the color of each component of our imported model, and to do that we'll use the GUI library. Again, I covered some of the basics of this library in the 3GS guide, so you can go and check the section dedicated to this subject in that video. So here we have our options object which will contain the color of each part of the model. And then we'll add a color picker for each part.
And that's it. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.